Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're having a good one. I know I am because I get to talk about another Claudia Gray novel. Yes! As you guys know from my Lost Stars review, I adore Claudia Gray. She is a fantastic author. Her writing style fits my reading style perfectly. Ugh. And we get to talk about Bloodline. Now, quick disclaimer, go read Bloodline or listen to it on Audible or something before you come and watch this video. But as a quick reminder to anybody that doesn't uh, quite remember, because this book is a couple uh, a couple of years old now, I think, if you may not remember everything that happened, essentially, what do I takes place? Uh, about 25-ish years post Return of the Jedi, uh, a few uh, about five or six years before um, the Force Awakens, and it's the story about Leia having to deal with the problems of a very fractured. New Republic central government. She has to worry about this upcoming, uh, up and coming uh, militia force that have ties to this First Order thing. And she uh, has a couple of adventures with a uh, senator who opposes her in a lot of ways, Ransom Castherfo, in an idealistic way. And this book does a great job of filling in holes that you might have from TFA. A lot of people had a lot of issues with the politics in TFA missing. <laughs> they weren't there. Nobody really, we didn't really understand the concept of how the galaxy works. We, I, I didn't even know that that wasn't Coruscant that blew up when I first went to see The Force Awakens. Not a lot of people did know that it was a uh, Hosnian Prime. Where the heck is that? And what the heck is that? And etc. Now, with that being said, real quick, the that's not an excuse. I that is an issue that TFA has. Just wanted to get that out there before you start typing your comments. Just yeah, I totally agree that that should have been told in the movie. But Claudia Gray does a really good job of filling that hole in in Bloodline. We get to see about the populists and the centrists, the two major political parties that have grown into the New Republic. A lot of the core word, core word worlds, say that's five times fast, uh, really want a central government, a very strong central government, a central government that, you know, uh, makes everybody dependent on one another. And the populists want everybody to kind of deal with their own things, but have a central military force and a central uh, governing force that does still do its thing. Now, with that being said, Leia is on the populist side, and then you have Ransom Castherfo on the um, centrist side. Uh, they're both kind of the, the charismatic faces of their different parties, and it's really fascinating to learn how these different political factions also have factions within themselves, uh, you know, you got your far right and your far left wing populists, and then you got your far right and then you got your far left wing uh, centrists. And it, for me, being a kind of political nerd, uh, yeah, it's it's really fascinating. And it fills so, like I said earlier, it fills so many different little tiny holes into what's been going on in the galaxy for the past 25 years or the past 30 years in between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Now, with all that being said, I do want to get three minor complaints that I have with this book out of the way, just because I like to end on positive notes. Number one, and probably the main reason why I don't rank Bloodwine quite as highly as I do Lost Stars, is that the pacing feels a little bit different. Um, to take the lazy reviewer's way out and just point to other media, I would say that Bloodwine is paced more like a thriller film, more like a political thriller, which is really what it is. It's paced in the same way that House of Cards is paced, or um, even not political, but uh, still a thriller, uh, something like Inception, where it's kind of, it allows you time to breathe and it allows you time to really think about the consequences of each thing that is happening. It's very much Dum, 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 story beat, story beat, story beat, story beat, story beat. Whereas Lost Stars was much more action adventure -y. It was very much more Star Wars-y. 
uh, in that it's story beat, story beat, story beat, story beat, story beat, skip, 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 story beat, story beat. And that's just kind of my own personal opinion. I really enjoy slower novels uh, like James Lucino does a wonderful job with this in Tarkin and uh, Catalyst and uh, Darth Plagueis. And Claudia Gray did a really good good job with it in this book, too. Just it's not quite what I enjoy personally. The other two complaints are even more finicky and nitpicky. And that's um, number one. The big plot spoiler of this entire book is that the whole galaxy finds out that Luke and Leia are Vader's kids. And me being as big of a proponent of nurture over nature, it, I, I found it hard to empathize with the rest of the galaxy. It's very much so. <laughs> they weren't raised by him, and that's what matters, so who cares? But that's just me imprinting my own bias onto the entirety of the galaxy, you know, the 100 quadrillion beings in the galaxy or however many there are. Complaint number three is even more finicky and even harder to explain. Uh, Lady Carice Sindian and the secondary characters in general in this book, I wasn't super invested in them like I was with characters like Nash Windrider and uh, Jude from Lost Stars. I just wasn't that interested in Leia's pilot or Leia's secretary or uh, uh, some of Leia's populist friends in the Senate. It just didn't interest me all that much. They weren't super compelling to me. And I don't really have a good reason for saying that. They just they weren't quite as intriguing as Jude and Wind, and Wind Rider was for me personally. That's just my opinion, man. And to kind of tack onto that, Lady Carice Sindian, who is, if you could, if you had to point to one character being the antagonist of this book, it's Lady Carice Sindian. And I'm not quite sure where Claudia Gray was trying to go with her, but if I had to put it Again, I'll take the lazy reviewers uh, road out and point to other media. I enjoy hating Umbridge from Harry Potter. I hate her. I hate her freaking guts. I hate her so much, but I liked hating her. I liked watching Harry have to deal with her crap. But then you have another villain, Joffrey from Game of Thrones. I hate this little crap. Family friendly, PG-13, or PG video. I hate him so much. I want to jump through the screen and strangle him every time he's on screen. And I don't enjoy hating him. I just hate him. And Lady Carice Sindian is that kind of character for me. I just hate her. And I don't want to see her, ever. To the point of, I kind of wish if there was another uh, villain in there, another uh, antagonist to poke and prod at Leia and to leak information and to be a founding member of the First Order? Question mark? I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, I'm, I just had my issues with Lady Carice. Now, the real meat and potatoes that I wanted to get into with this review, and the real reason why I wanted to review this, is because Claudia Gray is also writing Leia, Princess of Alderaan. How is she going to handle that character of Leia? Is she good at writing Leia? Does she have a good grasp of the character? And what can we expect? First two questions are answered. Yeah, she's got Leia. Down. To a science. She's got the characters' conversations perfectly. The speech pattern feels right to what Carrie Fisher gives us in the films. Uh, yeah, she's got the character Leia down pat. I am not in any way concerned with what she's going to do with Leia, Princess of Alderaan. 
Now, what can we expect? That's a lot harder to describe. There's even a couple of times in Bloodline where Elder Leia, Leia from, you know, Leia in her elder 40s, in her older 40s, her later 40s, um, thinks of back to her 14, 15, 16-year-old self, the self that we're going to get in the new Leia book, as a young, optimistic idealist. The thing is, is that 19-year-old Leia, or Leia from uh, A New Hope, is already kind of jaded, already kind of sarcastic, already kind of older than her years, essentially. And there is a massive difference in between uh, A New Hope Leia and Bloodwine Leia. But I'm wondering how big of a difference is there going to be in between A New Hope Leia and Leia, Princess of Alderaan Leia. I just said Leia a lot. Anyways, I'm, I'm really eager to find out how Claudia Gray handles that character tone. So with all that being said, I adored Bloodline. I have listened to it. I read it once when it first came out. I listened to it again about six months ago, and I listened to it again this week in order to do this review. And yeah, it's a phenomenal book. It's worth your money. Go pick it up. There's even lots of really cool little tidbits. This book feels like a capstone that kind of uh, you can extrapolate so much little information from little details. Like I plan on probably doing like a super short video uh, within the coming weeks about what Bloodline can tell us about Rebels, Han Solo, Star Wars Episode 8, Star Wars Episode 9. <laughs> you know, like there's so many little tiny things in Bloodline that kind of, oh, that could mean that we're going to see that in that film. Oh, that could mean that that's going to happen, or rather that's not going to happen in this TV show. But anyways, I'm starting to ramble, so I'm just going to end the video here. I want to know what you guys thought about Bloodwine, though. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read it? What did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you not like it? I love having conversations with you guys down there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on that for me so that then I know that I'm making something kind of entertaining. And be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and want more of it. Thank you as always, and may the Force be with you. Take care.